Hello fellow Wargamers and welcome to a Cities of Sigmar video. Um, today we're just going to kind of go over all the information about Cities in the current book and where it stands in the meta. Alright, so the Cities of Sigmar book is a really big book with a ton of War Scrolls. Not to mention your ability to bring in Stormcast and Sylvaneth and all kinds of other allies to help you out. So it kind of puts a lot of players where they don't really know where to start. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of enter with what's good about Cities. So the pros. So first of all, you've got the General's Retinue and the Adjutant. So that's going to give the General a Bodyguard. The bodyguard's really going to help out with just kind of keeping that guy alive. And then his Adjutant is going to help with giving you an extra CP on a 4-up every one of your hero phases. It's pretty good, pretty big for Cities specifically because Cities is a very CP heavy army. So it'll help you kind of build through your CP. Uh, additionally, they have really good magic lores. The, the magic lores and the pluses to casting are really good. Not to mention every single endless spell they get plus one to cast on. So you get a lot more endless spells off than some of the other armies. That being said, you really want to lean into the endless spells a lot of the times with cities, uh, especially with Hollow Heart. It feels bad not throwing two or three in there for sure. Uh, next, Coalition Allies. Like I said, there's so many different options. Uh, you can add stuff from Stormcast to KO to... Um, I mean, you can even add in Ideneth and Fire Slayer stuff. Uh, they're not necessarily Coalition Allies, but they can pull in some really cool stuff as well. Um, then the command traits and artifacts. Every one of these cities has a, has some decent little command traits and artifacts to go with them. Now it varies from city to city, so depending on which city you take, you will be have a list of command traits and artifacts, and we'll kind of go through them a little bit, not into too much detail. We'll do that more in a later video where we discuss each city in depth. Um, finally, optional battle line. Okay, optional battle line is really good for this meta that we're currently in with GV being something that can be killed really easily and cities not having a lot of really big good units that can kind of take a hit. The uh, optional battle line allows you to kind of make your real big hammer units not battle line. Um, obviously you can't triple reinforce, but it kind of keeps it from getting killed too easily. And, and again, with some of the optional battle line, a lot of it's mounted stuff too. So now you can possibly go in and only have one, maybe no units of GV. All right, what are the cons of cities? What's bad about this? No anvils. Nothing in this army can take a hit. Um, there's some things that are like okay at taking a hit, but still they're not great. All right, next, moving castle. It really kind of functions as this little castle, and you're just kind of pushing that group forward. There's a lot of auras. There's a, you know, if you got a Huracan, you want to keep that 10 inch plus one aura. Then you're looking at your general's adjutant. He needs to be within three inches of your general, who also needs to be within three inches of your actual general's retinue to keep them from dying. So there's a lot of little tiny things that are really frustrating. So it kind of pulls you into this moving castle scenario. And the moving castle scenario feels bad, especially for these eight objective uh, fights or when you start needing to spread out. So uh, armies like KO that can kind of spread out and kind of keep you fighting on multiple different fronts. Yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. I, another thing is it's an older book. So there's a lot of weird interactions. Some things only work certain ways. There's Commonly, there'll be a command trait or a artifact that lets you cast a spell, but you don't count as a wizard. So you don't get a dispel. Um, you don't get the bonuses. Certain things say specifically wizards. So it's kind of an odd thing. Next, battalion usage. Battalion usage is a, a really big thing right now. So a lot of people go with the one drop or they're trying to really jump into a higher drop. So cities not being able to take a hit almost always needs to be a one drop. So... Because you cannot take a very good hit, you find yourself skewing more towards the one and two drops, which means, okay, cool, I want to be a one drop. Well, there's a lot of things that are right at 10 wounds or just above 10 wounds that you want to take. So now you're choosing, do I want to take a Frost Heart? Do I want to take a Gur Battle Mage on Griffin? Or do I want to take that Huracana with the Wizard on him? So kind of that being said, it's pretty tough to use Battalions. Uh, a lot of the times as well, most of the units that hit pretty decently, a lot of their damage comes from mortal wounds. So you're not getting a bunch of bonus when you're taking um, bounty hunters because bounty hunters, it's just gonna get extra damage. Cool, yeah, it's nice and all, but it's not really 100% efficiency as opposed to like a unit you know, protectors and bounty hunters, right? Um, so next, uh, there is no real obvious easy efficiency pieces. So that being said, there's no unit that you can kind of pick up and go, cool, this is hard to deal with. There's no Nurgle flies that just sit there and go, okay, cool, I'm walking forward. Good luck killing me. Um, you can't just, you know, pull like a Fire Slayers thing where you just spam a bunch of guys or even ghosts, right? You can't just spam a bunch of stuff and kind of sit there. You really need to play off of the bonuses. And that commonly means that there's only one strong unit per phase or, 
or per turn for you to, to or for your enemy to have to deal with. So yeah, like, hey, okay, maybe I've got two big blocks of hammers. Well, only one's getting all my buffs. Makes it a lot a little weaker, right? Okay, so what's really good as far as units in here? So up here, I've got the casters, of course. I've got the sorceress, the battle mage, and the hurricanum. Sorceress, it's really easy for you to get the two plus two to cast. Um, you just kill one of your dread spears. Great, they're the, one of the best battle line in the game as well for cities. Cool, kill one of them, plus two to cast. I'm casting an endless spell, plus three to cast. Amazing. Um, the battle mages are kind of the same way. They've got a pretty good list of spells. If you take the Gur battle mage, he gets an innate plus one. If he's near her economy, he gets another plus one. You know what I mean? So you kind of build those little stacks up, or those little bonuses up, stack them up, and you end up with really good casting. The Huracanum himself also gives himself a plus one to cast, um, and then he's got a pretty good repertoire of spells. Both of his spells are really good. Uh, a Rune Lord as well is a fantastic thing. One, it's a priest, right? When you come against Fire Slayers, at least you get a chance to get rid of that stupid, pesky priest spell that he dropped, you know, the Endless Invocation, or maybe it's against uh, uh, Daughters of Cain, right? And you want to get rid of that invocation? Cool. The Rune Lord gives you a chance to do that. That's really nice. Um, additionally, he's also a unbind, so he gets an unbind at plus two, which is a fantastic thing. Give him an arcane tomb. Now he's a wizard, so he gets an innate unbind. He's got an unbind on his war scroll. Cool, you get two unbinds at plus two. Give him master magic. You know, he's he's pretty good at stopping some spells. Uh, next thing I have on here is the anointed on Frostheart Phoenix. So the anointed on Frostheart Phoenix is really good for the ore that it gives out, right? A is a tanky piece. B, he's reducing uh, everybody's damage in melee combat by minus one uh, to wound. Now, that's just as good as a plus one save, okay? The math is exactly even, right? If you can get a minus one to hit, to wound, or to save, you're in a good spot. That being said, you can also throw like a Frost Art Phoenix, throw in one of the light battle mages, make your big tanky or your big badass unit minus one to hit, minus one to wound, and give it a plus one save. And pretty much nothing gets through stuff like that. You can do that with dragons even. It'd be great. The Gur Battle Mage on Griffin. So what's really good about the Griffins is, first of all, if they die, you just stop allocating wounds right there, right? He's dead. Roll a die. On a two-up, he comes back to life anywhere on the battlefield. Not where he is, anywhere on the battlefield, outside of nine inches, right? And I think he gets like, uh, I think it's D3 wounds back or something like that. Not an amazing amount of wounds back, but if you're running, you know, Living Cities, they get to heal. Um, Hal Heart and Living Cities both have a D6 heal. There's some other heal spells, and maybe you're running uh, an endless spell to start healing them up a little bit. So you can build them back up pretty good, and it kind of keeps them from just getting one shot. It's really nice. I mean, one out of six times it still happens, but two plus is pretty nice. Uh, finally, I've got Iron Drakes on here. Iron Drakes are one of the most devastating shooting units. I mean, they will just destroy stuff. If you don't believe me, go out and try to look for a bat rep, find some Iron Drakes in it, and they're going to shoot everything off the table. The downside of them is they have to not move in order to get their double shot. So you have to really kind of look at ways to kind of trick stuff around. So I always bring Soul Screen Bridge or get it casting endless spells. There you go. Um, so let's go ahead and go into some bad units here. So I've only got a couple up here because uh, I find myself trying to use more units than not. So I've got the Gyrocopter and Gyro Bomber. I haven't really found a good use for these. The only things I could say that they're decent at is, you know, capturing a point that just someone doesn't babysit. Okay, cool. That's an expensive unit to do that. Uh, they don't do a lot of damage, and they're pretty pretty easy to kill. So maybe not the best thing for that. Maybe if you're in Tempest Eye, you could take a little boat from KO. It's a lot better off. Next thing on here are the Wildwood Rangers. The Wildwood Rangers are just... They just don't hit the mark. Even in the uh, monster meta that we were just in, in the last GHB, their extra damage just wasn't enough to actually bring it around. Um, I also have the Luminarch on here. The Luminarch, the shot's okay, great. Um, the pluses to Dispel is, is nice, and the 6-up ward save is nice, but is it 300 points nice? I'm going I'm to have to say no. And finally, I've got down here Iron Breakers. I have tried time and time again to try to build an Iron Breaker list. You can get it to work um, a little bit, but it's also terrible. Yeah, they're 110 points on a 3-up save. That's nice. They just don't do any damage. So... That being said, that's kind of the list in bad units. Um, I've got another list here. The uh, This right here is the efficient units. So what do I mean by efficient? I mean that they are tanky for their points. So a lot of the examples here are low point cost units that have a pretty good save and can kind of 
take a hit from a very minor attack, right? You're not talking about they're not taking a hit from Chaos Knights. They're not taking a, a hit from Fulminators, but they will survive a lot more things than you'd expect them to. So Dread Spears here. It's an 85 point unit, moves six inches, has a four up armor save base. Fantastic. Put them on an objective, make them remove them off the objective. Um, next, I've got the uh, long beards, and I, they're shown here with the two handed axes, but really what you bring them for a lot of the times is just a front line, get them to grumble so all your other dwarves are rerolling their ones to wound, and they have a three up save in melee. They don't have it against shooting, kind of sucks, but it is against melee. So, kind of a weird note on that. They only get the plus one to save in combat. Um, then we got the Drake Spawn Knights. Drake Spawn Knights are just a great base four up, they've got a decent move with 10 inch. Uh, 10 inches of movement. Um, they can charge in, do a little bit of damage. They're not amazing, but again, you get them there for being tanky. You can have them go into another screen. They're, they might kill, they might not, but guess what? Now you're in their face and you know for sure that those Drake Small Knights aren't going to die to your enemy screen. Uh, finally, I've got Wild Riders on here. Wild Riders are great. They're only 120 points. They are fast as can be, but they are a literal glass cannon. They can't take a hit from anything. They're really good at picking up other enemy screens, though. Um, they do pretty good. Uh, I've used them quite a few different times and um, they pretty much kill all the minor things that you have to deal with. Not to mention both of those units have banners so you can get the city's battle tactic really easy. Um, the hammerers as well are just a unit that, that have a lot of output. They only have a four inch move and a four up armor save so they're not that tough. They don't get around the board but they do have a really good output. It's really easy to get them to get an extra attack or two uh, depending on what type of heroes you bring as well. Um, and finally, honorable mention is going to be flagellants. They don't have any save. They're like 80 points. They move six inches, bravery eight. Guess what they do have though? An easy battle tactic. Their battle tactic is you just bring an 80 point of this, 80 point unit of this for a battle tactic. That's all you're using it for. So what it does is it goes, okay, cool. I'm not an objective. I'm not in the enemy territory. Can I do either of those things? Cool. Easy battle tactic. Done. Don't even have to control the objective. Just get on it. Get the battle tactic. Next up on this list, I have good Stormcast units. So every single city's army, except for maybe one, can take Stormcast units. So incorporating them into your army allows for a lot of really cool things. So I've got the Storm Drake Guard here because obviously dragons are dragons, right? They're good. Uh, next, I've got Long Strike Crossbows, excuse me. Um, these things put out a lot of damage at a very long range. So it kind of fills a gap. Cities doesn't have very far range with a lot of their guns. Everything that they shoot is like 16, 18 inches. So having that 30 inch range is really nice. For the same thing, I have the Knight Judicator here as well. He's he, just allowing him to pick off heroes is really nice. Um, <clears throat> then we've got Tempestors. Um, now I've got Tempestors up here, but any of them, Tempestors, Fulminators, they're fantastic. I mean, they're just gonna, they're gonna add that hammer that you really need. Uh, and then I've also got Protectors. Protectors are amazing at taking a punch. Not to mention, are they great at taking a punch? They do some damage back too. I absolutely love protectors. Finally, I've also got the uh, Stormstrike Chariot. The Chariot's a really nice little tech piece. It hits pretty decently hard. And on top of that, it can kind of be your front line and basically allow you to kind of get you some breathing room and throw, the, throw a couple of those out and kind of let your army kind of fill into its spot and deal with what it needs to deal with. Um, so that will bring us to our different cities. Um, now all your cities are different sub factions. We're going to go ahead and start out with Anvil Guard, um, put them in a random order. I've kind of got just some basic stats on the board of how I think they play. So I give Anvil Guard a 7 out of 10. Um, so basically let's start out with their spell lore. Um, they have a fantastic spell lore. Uh, and that being said, they've got a fantastic spell lore specifically because of one spell, Vitriolic Spray. I'm sure you've heard of it. There's a lot of memes going out. There's a lot of builds that people try. It's really fun when you get it to work. Cool. It's only a six inch range. Get Spell Portal. Again, we're bonus to cast Spell Portal. So plus one to cast Spell Portal at least. If you get it through a Sorceress, now you're looking at plus three to cast Vitriol, or excuse me, Spell Portal. Then you've got your plus two to cast a Vitriolic Spray from either another wizard or maybe you put an Arcane Tome. So he's got a second cast. Um, it does only go off on an eight, but again, you get the bonuses. Get rid of that enemy armor save. I'm going to shoot the crap out of that unit. That unit's pretty much gone. Um, one of my favorite things to do with Anvil Guard is throw in Krondus as an ally. Um, Krondus is great because he's already got an 8 plus 3 to cast. So, cool. He gets into combat or he gets charged. He somehow survives it. 
next turn that unit that charged them is going to have no armor save. You know what I mean? Because you're already base to base with them. Um, next, let's go into the uh, special rules. So the special rules for Anvil Guard are pretty cool. So you've got uh, a lot of different little things. So first, there's an illicit dealing. Uh, the illicit dealing is really nice. It can give you a little tiny bonus. It's not anything amazing, but you know you get an extra artifact most of the time. So the Drake Bullet curses are really good, um, and the fact that you get to add one to one of your Cryptus, a War Hydra or a Dragon. I like to add the plus two or the minus two bravery to everyone near the Cryptus. So everyone near the Cryptus is minus three bravery. It's fantastic. Uh, and then uh, let's go into their artifacts. So their artifacts are six out of ten. Uh, they're okay. There's nothing really good. Um, pretty much what that means when you got a six or lower, you're pretty much taking Marking Tome Master Magic. That's what's going to be fantastic in this list anyways, is what it is. Command ability is really nice. Spend a CP, kill one dude, nobody takes Battle Shock near your uh, general. Really good. Um, and then the actual command traits in the uh, Amble Guard list are terrible. I gave them a four out of ten. There's nothing really great to speak of. Um, but you do have options to get Master Magic, and that's where a lot of people will choose. Okay, for our second city, we're showing off Excelsius. Now, Excelsius is kind of an interesting city. I've played around with a few different options from time to time. Um, but let's go ahead and get into their spell lore. Their spell lore is pretty much terrible. Um, there's really nothing here that jumps out at me as being good. Um, everything's kind of iffy. Yeah, okay, you do a little bit of damage with Sphere, but it's all short-range stuff. Who cares? Um, now, their special rules are... Um, there are... I gave them a 5 out of 10 here. Now, the reason why I gave them a 5 out of 10 is because um, the Gift of Prophecy, which is what a lot of people bring this for, is a die roll. So on a 1, subtract 1 from your hits. On a 2 through 6, add 1 to your hits. Now, that being said, it's not very good for a tournament. Um, having fun playing with your buddies, fantastic. You know what I mean? You're not really worried about it. Sure, I lose the game. I don't really care. It's fun to do. Okay, I get a lot of... I like, Five out of six times, my guys get plus one to hit. But that minus one to hit in a tournament, it's going to always cause you to lose some random game. Maybe it's game three, maybe it's game five, you know, in the finals. And here, my big unit slams in. Cool. Plus one to hit? Nope. Minus one to hit. And then you don't do enough damage, you end up getting slaughtered in return. It's just not that great. Um, so then their artifacts, uh, I give them a six out of ten. Their artifacts are okay. They've got some really good ones that are minus one to hit, plus one move. I really like that one. Um, most of the time you're still going to be probably taking Arcane Tome Master Magic unless you get a second one. The artifact's not bad. Uh, and then the command traits. Uh, command traits are okay. The one that really stood out, that like, kind of pushed it up to a 7, is you can give your, uh, your general Cunning Foe so he can retreat and then charge into fight, and he's minus 1 to hit when he charges them that way. Um, really nice on a Griffin, maybe, um, maybe a Frost Art Phoenix. Pretty good. Um, and then... Uh, excuse me, that was Command Traits. I gave it a 5. Sorry. It's the only one that's kind of useful. Um, and then finally, Command Ability is Repost. Uh, I like this one a lot. Uh, I, again, I give this one 7 out of 10. Um, it's solid in the fact that you pick a unit and every set, 6 to armor save is going to be a mortal wound back at the enemy. So if you've got a unit that's pretty tanky that you're not really super worried about needing to all out defense, or maybe it's something that doesn't have a high rend, cool. I'm going to use Repost, and we'll get a lot more damage out, depending on how many attacks they're sending at us. Uh, helps get rid of, like, Pink Horrors and stuff like that that are attacking like crazy. Uh, overall, that kind of leads Excelsius to a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's a decent city. It's not amazing. Uh, really fun to play against your buddies. Not something to bring to a tournament. Okay, our third city is going to be Greywater Fastness. Now, I gave this guy uh, not the greatest scores because uh, there's just not a lot of good stuff right now. Uh, I've been playing with it a little bit to try to figure out if I could build some artillery builds. And Greywater Fastness really likes to have a lot of artillery. Um, so the spell lore isn't amazing. There's there's nothing really good. It's got a decent little, uh, um, excuse me, it's got a decent little uh, horde clearing spell. It's not great. There's one that targets some terrain and does some damage. Again, not great. Um, the special rules on this thing... Uh, again, it's an old book, and, and here's an example of it. So the special rule here is... There's a prayer that goes off on a two, and you just add one to attacks with missile weapons on that war machine. Only a war machine. I mean, if I really need it that bad, I'm just going to all out attack, right? Why would I need to bring a priest and cast a prayer at the same time? Let me just all out attack. It's fine. Um, 
uh, uh, the other rules that are pretty nice, I guess. Um, the other special rule for Greywater Fastness is the home of the Great Ironweld Guilds, um, and that allows you to bring another piece of artillery. Again, the artillery aren't very good. They're not amazing. Yeah, cool, I can bring five of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, organ guns? Cool, I got five organ guns. It's not gonna cut through very much. Uh, next, going into the command ability for uh, Greywater Fastness, I only give this a two. Um, so basically the way it works is you gotta pick uh, high-end gunners or iron drakes, um, and you add one to hit. Cool, we've already got all-out attack. I don't need a special command ability. Maybe if you wanna shoot two units, but hand gunners already get a better ability from a, a, a free guild general. And then Iron Drakes, you're gonna need a Rune Lord to buff up their Ren, so you're only really picking one unit. So picking two units doesn't help you in either scenario. So the command ability is pretty garbage. Uh, there's some very niche uses for it, so I gave it a two, but it's still pretty garbage. Um, Finally, the command traits. I gave them a six out of 10. I mean, they're okay. One of them lets you get an extra CP on a four up. That's nice, you know what I mean? It's not terrible. Um, Rerolling hits of ones for attacks with missile weapons um, for units that are within 12. Sure, that's okay, but again, you could just go to Tempest Eye and add plus one to wound. So I just, it, it isn't as good as some of the other ones. So overall, I gave Greywater Fastness a 3 out of 10. I don't think it's going to see any play, even with your buddies. Uh, I'm sure there's some narrative builds or something that I really enjoy it. No clue. All right, for our next city, we have Hallowheart. Now, Hallowheart is by far my favorite city. So the spell lore, I've got a 9 out of 10 here. The spell lore is, instead of being only 3 spells, it is 6 spells. You've got a healing spell. You've got to deal damage with uh, whenever you take, or whenever you lose a guy in melee combat, you take you deal damage back on a 4+. plus. It's fantastic. You've got a decent little horde clearing spell. You've got um, an extra chain lightning, so you're shooting and dealing D3 mortals to a target. And then everything within 6 on a 4 up, they take D3 as well. Spell lore is fantastic. Oh, did I mention a plus one to wound spell? Oh, and also a D6 heal spell. I mean, it's just such a good spell lore. The special rules here, I gave a nine out of 10. Everybody loves ignoring enemy spells. So if you're fighting a croak or something cool or a tech list, your whole army is ignoring everything on a five plus. Oh, and let's go back to that spell lore. You get a different spell off, your whole army is ignoring spells on a four up. That's really nice to have. Next, let's go into the artifacts. Uh, the artifacts aren't amazing here. Pretty much with Hallow Heart, you always choose Arcane Tome because every one of the wizards uh, is going to get two casts. Again, part of that special rules. Really nice to have an extra cast. But if you take a Noble or something and, and you want, uh, or a Nomad Prince, I mean, excuse me, and you wanted him to get two uh, two casts, cool. Just give him an Arcane Tome. He gets two class, cast busy Hallow Heart Wizard. It's fantastic. All right, so for the Hallow Heart command ability, it's kind of unique. So what you're going to do is you're going to, you spend ACP, so it costs a CP to do. The guy that you're channeling on is gonna take D6 mortal wounds. So you need to have a target to actually channel through. So you want someone that's got more than six wounds. So you're looking at a behemoth or a frost or phoenix, something, right? If those wounds are negated, it doesn't give you the bonus. But however many wounds the model actually takes, you get a bonus to casting for everybody near him. Now this does not include the model that took the damage. So if you have frost or phoenix, take six wounds, roll a six, um, and you're like, cool, I'm going to make my uh, four up ward saves. You make three of them. Now everyone near him gets plus three to cast, but the Frostheart Phoenix will not. So the command ability is pretty good, uh, but sometimes you'll have yourself rolling fives and sixes. You don't always need a plus six to cast because you've already got a plus two from other things. And then a plus nine to cast that endless spell really doesn't help you out that much. They weren't going to dispel it if it was only plus five, right? Um, so that being said, sometimes you kind of run into trouble where you start taking too much damage. Uh, and it is a little swingy. Um, lastly, the command traits. I really like the command traits. Uh, one of them is you get rid of an endless spell at plus two if you're already a wizard. Really fun to do with a rune lord. Um, oh, excuse me, plus three. So the rune lord get the plus three from the command ability if he's your general, and then plus two from uh, his innate thing. So he's dispelling endless spells at a plus five. So if it's a six to go off and you're all snake eyes, you still dispel it. It's fantastic. Uh, really easy to get rid of that pesky purple sun that's been hanging out your run uh, in the middle of your army. Not that you're really that worried about it because you're Hallow Heart. Um, but that being said, I give Hallow Heart an 8 out of 10. I think it's the strongest city or close to the strongest city in cities. All right, so next city we have is Hammer Hall. So Hammer Hall is a pretty good little city. Um, the spell lore is pretty decent. You've got one that helps kind of clear up waves a bit. 
Uh, and then there's one that gives it an AOE minus one to hit. I've kind of really props up the spell lore. That one's pretty much the best. Um, special rules, I gave him a seven out of 10 because you don't take Battleshock in your own territory. So that being said, if we get a new GHB and the territories are a lot bigger, or if you're going to a tournament that's got the really big territories where it's 50-50, I think Hammer Hall goes up in value a lot. So Hammer Hall, you don't take Battle Shocks while you're in your own territory. Uh, additionally, you get a lot of CP, so very CP heavy armies. This will help uh, basically prop that up. So every single unit that has a banner, you roll a die and on a six, you get an extra to CP. Um, so it kind of helps build everything up. Um, and that doesn't have to be used. It's not like her, the heroic action where it has to be used immediately. Uh, the artifacts are actually really cool too. So I really like the artifacts. So there's the twin stone. Um, it lets you add one to hit for all units within 12. And then there's the, the other side of it. So you can use this or the other one. The other version, like the other side of it, is um, roll a dice for each hammer hall unit within 12 inches. And on a four plus, they heal D3 wins. So you choose which side of the stone you want to use every turn, which is really cool. Um, of course, there's also the Saint's Blade and Crave the, the Rand of a Weapon by One is really nice. And then one that just gives you a plus one to your armor save. So I really like the artifacts here. Um, kind of hoping they get rid of Universal Artifacts and let us start kind of tapping into all the cool little things that we have in different books. Uh, next is, is the Command Ability. Um, so the Command Ability is fantastic, but I only give it a seven here. Command ability lets you fight twice. Okay, why does it only get a seven? Fighting twice sounds amazing. Well, um, it's just, here's two things, right? Cities doesn't take a hit very hard. If cities gets hit, a lot of times they die. Okay, so that's one of the reasons. The other reason is fight twice is only if you're in or wholly within enemy territory. And with the way that the battle plans are right now, that doesn't happen very often. So it kind of, it really detracts from that amazing command ability. I mean, if this was anywhere on the battlefield, man, this thing would be 10 out of 10. I'd be running hammer all a lot more. Uh, finally, the command traits. Command traits are okay. Um, nothing too amazing. Um, Rerolling wounds of one, great. You know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of fantastic things that are in the command traits. You're probably taking a master of magic or something along those lines. Um, Overall, I give City, uh, excuse me, I give Hammerhall a six, uh, only because of the deployment zones. If the deployment zones get fixed, again, we might see it more often in a lot of different armies. All right, for our next city, we have Harkuron. So this city is basically, I want to don't want to play with Stormcast. I want to play with Daughters of Cain as my allies. So with the city, you can bring one for your units, of Daughters of Cain. So the spell lore is really freaking good. Um, and the reason it's so good is it's got vitriolic spray again. We've discussed that previously. Amazing spell. And then on top of that, there's three additional spells. So it has a six spell lore, which is just really strong. Um, a lot of different options, a lot of different things you can build into. The special rules are also really good for Harkiron. Again, you're, uh, you're able to choose, uh, more Daughters of Cain stuff. And you get a cool little uh, prayer that lets you get double hits. It's basically like an uh, all-out attack. So you get two hits on a six. Um, it's not amazing, but it's good. Uh, the artifacts in this thing aren't the greatest. Uh, I, like I said, I've got them as a five out of ten, which means you're probably taking Master of Magic and uh, Arcane Tome, or maybe you know just an Arcane Tome for here. Um, finally, we've got the command, or next we got the command ability. Uh, the command ability is make an example of the week. It's the same as the other one. You kill one guy and everybody within 18 inches of that unit doesn't take battle shock. I mean, that's fantastic. Gets you, it's not like they, they just don't have to take the shock. You know what I mean? So you don't have to worry about anything. Ghost, nothing. Don't care. Uh, and then the command traits, like I said, aren't the greatest. Um, kind of leaves you taken. Um, maybe like, uh, again, Arcane Tome Master Magic is probably the best way to go. <clears throat> then finally, command traits, they just aren't the best. You're probably going to end up with an Arcane Tome and Master of Magic again here. Um, but overall, that leads Harkiron at a uh, 6 out of 10. It's a pretty fun list. There's a lot of cool little things you can do with the army. Um, but again, it's not the most powerful. You're not going to see it all over the tournaments. All right, for our next city, we have Mist Haven. I believe that's how it's said. So it's spell lore, zero. It doesn't get one. I don't know why. Um, but for some reason, Mist Haven just doesn't get a spell lore. Um, is what it is. Special rules, I gave them a seven out of 10. Um, you get these narcotics that are really neat. Um, so you can kind of choose how you want to do it. And also you can keep people in reserve. So very similar to like a living city setup, keep things in reserve. 
it's, it's nice. It's not amazing. It's nice. Uh, artifacts, okay, nothing really to write home about. Command ability, I gave this one a 9 out of 10. So the reason I like this one so much is you got to set up, again, outside a 9 of an enemy. But you can use this command ability, use a CP, gets to move D6 inches. Um, and that's after it's set up. Um, so it's a pretty nice little thing to kind of help you bridge that gap, right? So it's almost like a 3D6 charge. Um, finally, command traits just aren't the greatest. Again, they're they're pretty bad. So um, you're probably going to end up with an Arcane Zone Master Magic or something along those lines. Overall, I give Mist Haven a 6 out of 10. It's got some pretty little niche uses. Um, could be fun to play with your buddies. Again, you're not going to see this one at tournaments very often. All right, for our next city, we have Living City. Um, this one is a pretty dang good city. So for its spell lore, I'd say it's pretty freaking good. Um, you've got one that's minus one to wound on a unit. Also, there's a D6 heal. Um, so those are pretty solid little things. The special rules, I gave them 7 out of 10. So you've got, um, basically you can set up near the board edge outside of 9 um, with half your unit. So you can basically deep strike half your units. Um, that's pretty nice. The artifacts are pretty solid. There's one that gives you, a, I believe it's like plus one to save and extra attack or something along those lines. The artifacts are just solid. They're not amazing. They're solid. Uh, the command ability isn't bad either. It's that strike and fade. It used to be really good when you could move forward. So you could shoot and then move forward. Now you can no longer do that. You still got to stay outside of nine. Um, so it's it's been nerfed a decent amount. I'm kind of glad it did because it was really awkward. Um, and then finally the command traits are, they're okay. Um, nothing really to write home about. Uh, you're probably going to be taking an Arcane Tome Master Magic in this army as well. Um, but they're, they're not bad. So uh, overall we give Living City a 7 out of 10. Um, I don't know if I wrote, said this earlier, but in their special rules, they also heal one every single time in your hero phase. So every model heals one, um, which is really nice. So if you're running, you know, cavalry or heavy cav, stuff like that, monsters, does really good into them. Okay, now for one of the other cities that I think is one of the better ones, um, of the Phoenicium. Their spell lore is pretty, pretty solid. Allows you to heal a few units. So... Everybody within 12 inches that's visible to them gets to heal D3. That's a pretty nice little spell. Um, subtract one from bravery for everything near you for enemies. Not bad either. Uh, and then finally, the Amber Tide. Half a unit's move characteristic at an 18-inch rage. Isn't bad. Um, so it's a pretty good little spell roll. Um, the special rules for this one, I kind of gave it a 6 out of 10. So for the special rules, you're getting um, all your Phoenixes get an extra wound. That's pretty nice. Uh, so for your special rules, you're also getting uh, plus one to hit and wound for attacks made with melee weapons by Fenecrium units as long as one of your units has been destroyed in the same phase. So uh, that just innately happens. So this is why you see a lot of times assassins, the assassin pops out. A lot of times they want to kill the assassin because the assassin will put out good damage. If they kill the assassin, everything else gets plus one to hit and wound. On top of that as well, you can use its really good command ability where... You pick one Frostheart Phoenix or a Flamespire Phoenix, and everybody within 12 inches, when they die, they get to fight. Okay, cool. What do you kill first? Do I kill this or this? Everything's fighting on death anyways. I don't really care. You know what I mean? So you're almost playing that attrition role in melee, and it's really nice setup. Uh, I'm sure we're going to see more Phenecrium list here soon uh, once we rotate into the next GHB style. The artifacts here, um, they're okay. Uh, personally, my favorite one is the Phoenix Fire Ashes. So basically, whenever you make a six to save, you can heal that the bearer that a uh, one wound. So you put that on your Frost Art Phoenix. Every time he rolls a six, he gets to heal one instead of take one. So pretty nice. Um, let's just add to the longevity of the Frost Art Phoenix because it really isn't that tanky wounds wise, um, but it helps keep it alive a little longer. Finally, command traits. Um, the command traits in this army are okay. Um, one that's decent is no battle shock within 12. Cool. Uh, not amazing, but it is solid. Um, and then there's some other stuff that gives you a few more attacks, but a lot of times the city's generals aren't really the ones that are wanting to attack a lot. So overall, I give the Phoenicium an 8 out of 10 um, because this, the list that you can write um, is really strong. It doesn't have a lot of Ability, so there's not a lot of changes you can make to it. You pretty much have to bring two Frost Art Phoenixes um, and probably some Phoenix Guard. But it allows for a really fun playstyle with Assassin's Phoenix Guard and uh, 
and the birds as well. And you just kind of set up a big, big block right in the middle and just fight your way out of it like a big moving castle. Okay, for our second to last city, we have Settler's Gain. Now this one is located in the Teclas book, so it's not going to be in the original city's book. And there's a lot of them that are like that, that are rotated out and about. Um, and feel free to ask if you want to know where the city comes from. So the spell lore in this one is a 5 out of 10. It's not a great spell lore. But because you are allowed to take um, elves, so you're allowed to take the Lumineth, you kind of have access to more spellcasters. Um, so every unit you incorporate, and a lot of times those Lumineth have spellcasters as well. So I give it a 5 out of 10. I mean, it's an okay spell lore. It's nothing amazing. Maybe you probably want to use those wizards to cast endless spells and stuff like that. Um, special rules, I give it a 7 out of 10. You can pull 1 and 4 units from Lumineth. So these are not exclusive, again, uh, like the Harkuron one. This one is 1 and 4 can be from Lumineth. 1 and 4 can also be from Stormcast. So only 50% of the units have to be from the city's book. Um, so it's kind of cool. Um, and then on top of that, you can add one to casting for all wizards and our, our college arcanic wizards in the city. And then you also get an extra artifact as long as it goes on a college arcanic hero or a free guild hero. So, um, you, you normally want to bring a battle mage anyway, so it kind of allows for you just getting a free, uh, artifact on them. Uh, next let's go into the artifacts. So there's actually six artifacts to choose from. Um, and they're pretty good. A lot of times with this army, I like to bring a arcane tome on one guy for the, you know, an extra cast. And on the other guy, you bring the uh, silver plated wand, which gives him a second cast. So you end up getting a lot of different cast off. Um, obviously, there's armies that it's bad into, you know, corn, if you're rerolling all your casts and stuff, feels bad. Um, but it is what it is. It's a fun little list. It lets you bring your Lumineth army with your city's army, with your Stormcast army, and just have a big fun blast forward. Uh, I made a fun list earlier where it's got 20 protectors and uh, a bunch of the sentinels behind it and then just minimum battle line. Just something fun, you know, cool, get through my protectors while the guys shoot at me, you know, it's a, it's a great little list. Um, all right, so for Settler's Gain, I gave the command ability 2 out of 10. Now, the way it works is you pick one Lumineth hero. You know, you probably aren't bringing Lumineth heroes, but let's say you did. Pick one of them and then all free guild guard or collegiate arcane units Within 18 inches of that, don't take a battle shock dust. Uh, I'm, it's pretty pretty useless most of the time. Um, very rarely will that actually come up. Uh, finally, the command traits themselves. They're not that great. You're probably taking Master Magic just so you can re-roll some stuff. There's one that gives you a 4-up command point that's common in City's book. But overall, I give Settlers Gain a 6 out of 10. Okay, for our last city, we have Tempest Eye. Now, Tempest Eye is such a cool city. I'm telling you, it is one of my favorites. So, Tempest Eye, we're going to go into the spell lore first. Spell lore, I gave it a 7 out of 10. You know why? You get one spell in there. It's not the easiest spell to get off. I think it goes off in like a 7 or an 8. But it gives everybody in an aura plus 1 attack. So, yeah, those Drake Spawn Knights, yeah, or the Stormguard Knights, excuse me, that are riding Drakes, yeah, the Rider and the guy below gets an extra attack. There's a way to bring a Tempest Eye list that's got 8 dragons in it pretty fun to do. Okay, let's jump into their special rules. Wire Dragon's good into Tempest Eye as well. The whole army gets plus one to its save turn one. The whole army. So a lot of times not that much is going on in turn one, but having that plus one save is really good. If you're a heavier drop list, and this is one of the ones that I feel a little safer doing a heavier drop list, you can just run everything forward and say, okay, come fight me. I've got, right now I'm buffed. My whole army is plus one to save. Let's go. Um, additionally, the whole army gets to move plus three inches. So you can really just posture and really take board control turn one. It's really nice. Make them dig themselves out of it. It's one of the few cities armies that can play ahead and make them respond to you. Um, next we have the artifacts. Um, so the artifacts here for Tempest High are pretty freaking good. Um, so there's one that just lets you not take a battle shock. There's another one that gives you a CP on a four up. And then there's another one that lets you reroll charges. Um, all three of them have their points and uses, and you can make a list like where you're using all of them. Then let's go into command abilities. I mean, command abilities are also very good in this list. Um, you're looking at plus one to charge for all Tempest Die units within 12. Okay, let me stack that artifact on. So now everybody's got plus one to charge and reroll charges. Guess what? All cities units have musicians pretty much. So they're minimum plus two to charge. And they're re-rolling. Okay, cool. Maybe that one unit's really important. Well, let's throw the, the Gur spell on it. Cool. Now they're plus four to charge. Re-rolling. 
So you, you get a lot of distance you can add to little things. Um, Hawkeye is another really good command trait. Um, basically everybody within 12 add plus one to their wounds with missile weapons. Um, it's pretty nice. You just set them in the middle next to the Herc on them. Now everybody gets plus one to hit and wound with anything they shoot out. Um, then let's go into the command abilities. So the command ability is actually really cool. It allows you to run and shoot. So uh, I didn't say this earlier, but in the special rules, every time you run a unit that's Tempest Eye, they get plus one to run. So, okay, cool, my Huracanum's not within range. Let me go ahead and run it. It gets plus one to my roll, and then I'll use a CP to shoot my Huracanum as well. Um, or, you know, maybe it's a pile of Iron Drakes that only have a four inch move. Okay, well, let me run them. So, okay, maybe I cast the spell on them so they're plus two to run and charge. Well, they've got plus one from the city, and then they've got another plus one because they've got a musician. So I roll a six on the die. Those little tiny dwarves then run six plus four plus four, 14 inches, and then they can shoot their normal 16 inches. So they can really cover ground and be able to shoot with just one CP. Really nice. Um, that being said, I give Tempest Eye an eight out of 10. I mean, Tempest Eye is probably, to me, one of the strongest cities. If you're new and you want to get into cities, I would say go towards Tempest Eye. Another thing I forgot, one in four of your units can be from KO. So you can put some boats on there and get some easy battle tactics um, by just throwing a couple of KO boats around, like the little cheap ones that are only 155 points. Uh, and they just basically teleport around the board, shooting stuff for you and kind of plinking off little heroes. Um, it's, it's a really nice army. There's so much stuff you can do. Uh, and being able to pull from Stormcast and KO allows for a lot of really cool mixes in the armies and lets you set up some really neat things. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, feel free to drop them below. Um, I'm going to try to make more videos about each city in specific and, and some tools, some list out for each ones as well. That way you kind of know how can I build a good list that's going to go to tournament and at least win a few games. Maybe you're not going to win it all right at the bat, but you know, you can take it, win three, four games and go home happy. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.